hospitals. Um, and I'm also uh, an ambassador with the Academy of Fab NHS staff. Um, and um, Fab Change Day is our celebration day every year um, and since, uh, um, since the Fab Academy took it over from the NHS change agents. And uh, we, we love um, being able to get out and about and um, share lots of amazing things and hope to inspire people um, to do things differently and um, learn from others. And clearly in this current world, we're having to do that virtually. Um, but um, yeah, that's one of, the, one of the changes that has come around and we're all learning to live with it. So thank you for choosing to come into this tent. Um, the, you can see that I have um, the amazing Ignar Rip with us. Ignar is also uh, a Fab Ambassador. Um, I was digging around to find out a little bit more about him other than what I know through the Academy event. And he lives in a little town in Holland near Arnhem. Um, most of us have probably seen or heard of the uh, the war film, A Bridge Too Far, Operation Market Garden. Um, and that's where Ignar lives. Well, not on the bridge, of course, but near it. Um, and as I say, he's a fellow Fab Ambassador and an award winning one, too. Um, and I'm going to make him blush, but it, it, you know, it's just the most magical and inspirational person when it comes to the work that he does with music. Um, he'll no doubt tell you where that love comes from. Um, and um, what he's giving to us um, at the Academy is that a real awareness and understanding of that music needs to be seen as a care aid. It needs to be in our clinical team's back pocket in just as just as importantly as we would have medications or nutrition or any other sort of personal care. And, I, and you know, and, and absolutely that's what Ignar is going to share with us today. Those of you that are aware or have looked into the work of the Fab Academy will probably have heard the phrase, the little things are the big things, um, and how just the smallest things can often make a huge, huge difference to somebody's lives. Um, and what um, Ignar is going to be able to show you is how those small things um, that go such a long, long way when we're suffering, and those random, or not even random, but those small acts of kindness, um, like getting somebody a 50th birthday balloon or helping them to listen to their playlist can make such a difference. So it's going to be a fabulous session. Uh, we hope you enjoy it. Uh, and like I say, even though we're a small select group, it's the quality, not the quantity. Um, that, that matters. So I'm going to pass you over to Ignar, the amazing Ignar. Over to you. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Jenny, for a really nice introduction. And uh, you have told us very nice that music is a helping aid and that you uh, need it. Um, well, before we start, uh, I will ask you, um, just to close your eyes and when you do that think about your favorite piece of music and i think at the moment that you think about your favorite piece of music you will hear it in your head and it makes you feel good and there's the magic of music it even works when there is no music just only by thinking of speaking about music there happens much much in your brain and that's the power and that's, this power is much bigger than you think and you can use that power for yourself, for your own well-being, for your patients, and to reduce your workload with it. As music is one of the most strongest self-tools there is. Music chases uh, your blues away, uh, it uplifts your mood, and you can really say music is a natural antidepressant. And 
you can use or better you need it when your workload is too high and your work becomes too heavy or when you are hurt by what a patient uh, family member or a boss has said to you when you are exhausted uh, disappointed scared and at the time uh, you go depressed home uh, you cannot switch off you sleep badly you wake up tired and going uh, with a heavy heart to your work and it is then it is then that music can help you as music is capable like no other than to reduce stress and provide you with a positive mood. And how are you do, going to do that? And which music is going to help you? Well, super, super power as the music that we have heard between our 50 and 25 years. Because this music is so deeply rooted in our brain that even Alzheimer's, these music memories, do not can destroy. And the magic of that music is that it immediately brings back the joy and the happiness of that time. Try it yourself. Make your own 50-25 playlist. And this is really the only way to really experience the great power of music. And when you are going to make this list, don't do this out of your head. Go looking to the charts of those years, uh, or you can go to Fab Music, NHS, on Spotify. I have made there many lists, and you find uh, the UK hits from 1950 till 2000. Uh, they help you and inspire you for your 5025 50, playlist. But also think about the music uh, your parents, sister or brother has played. You have heard that music. And the music you have heard at a church, a party, a radio or TV. This music is what you heard. Not the music you have liked, not the music you have bought, uh, not your favorite one. No, the music you have heard. And this music is pure emotion. So make this list, listen to it, and observe what it does with you. And when you have experienced and felt the power of music and you want to make use of it. I advise 10 for the best. 10 playlists are your own supporting system. And number one is the good morning. A playlist for an optimistic start of the day. Two, go get to work. That prevents you uh, during the read or during the time you go to work from worrying and negative thoughts because they steal your energy away and opti optimistic thoughts give you energy. The third playlist is time out. This one is for break or at the moments at your work you think I can go on. It, it's over. So take out your phone, uh, look at your playlist and play one song for three minutes and it helps you. Four is going home. This music helps you processing the day. Uh, it helps you, prevents you from not, uh, don't take the warriors at home. Very important because home has to be your safe and shelter. Five, that is uh, your 5025 playlist. This is your basic list, uh, will help you to fill all the lists and also inspire you 
for other music. Six is working out loud. Uh, this music is helping you with working out better, nicer, happier, and also it prevents you again from negative thoughts. Playlist seven is tranquility. This music brings you in contact with yourself, it brings you in balance, and it gives you inner peace. And I think this is one of the most uh, important list because it brings back to yourself and there you find the power to go on. Eight, courage. This is music that helps you to go on at the moment. You think, well, I don't know how, or I don't dare, or it has no use. Uh, for myself, two songs of Dolly Parton helps me always when I think, well, what the use is it, or everything is against me. It's better get a living, and in the meantime, playlist nine, happy. That is all the music that makes you shout out, sing out loud, make you dance on the table. And then 10 as good night. And that is music uh, that makes you relax and uh, that helps to fall asleep. And I think very important is uh, the moment uh, before you're falling asleep, most people uh, started to think and worrying and negative thoughts. And that's really get you out of sleep, steals away again energy. And so the music helps you to break down, to break down these circles and help you to sleep. So feel the 10 for the best with your music. And most important is that you really be aware of the power of music and that you really conscious go looking for the right music at the right time. So these are not uh, just your favorite playlist or just turn on the radio. No, this is not. You are looking for the best music at that time or at that moment you need it. And as music helps you, it can help your patients. And the patients for which you have less time. Um, because you want to comfort uh, the terrified patient, uh, to console the crying boy, uh, talk to that lonely lady, and be there for the dying patient. But you have no time being understaffed and overloaded. Really, at the moment, and also the winter is coming, it is terrifying. But you can, in a way, help. And in a way, it costs not much time. And how do you do that? Well, ask the patient for his favorite song. Just I have done with you. And you know what it does with you? It does also with the patient. There happens at that moment much in the brain. The patient think, here's the music I feel. Because a favorite singer or a piece of music is, is like really like a good friend. It's, it's giving shelter, it's giving strength, confidence and courage. Courage, I'm sorry for my English. So then tell the patient about your own 5025 experience. And that is why it is so very important that you make your own 5025 playlist. Because talking from your own experience makes it much, much powerful and believable. And then you ask advice or maybe order the patient to make his own 5025 playlist. And the next shift or the next day, you ask the patient about his experience with his 5025 playlist. And then when the patient has stopped and when he has really feel the power and the magic, you explain very cold 
very short what the power, what the music is doing in the brain with you. A very simple music activates the whole brain. Music contributes to a better and faster recovery. Favorite music makes the brain produce endorphins. And endorphin is also called body's own morphine. You got that? That is very short, what music do. And then and the patient knows about the power of music and you have explained it you as you give him the recipe. One take five playlist and fill them. For the patient is the good morning playlist in motion. And that's the music that helps him uh, to get out of bed uh, and pyjama days, uh, but also helping with his uh, rehab exercises. Being in motion is so important. And the music brings him motion. Free tranquility. Also, we are again bringing him back with the self, feeling his own power or opening his source, his own sources. Four is happy. This is really power boost. Everybody can use when you are laying sick in an hospital. And five is good night. And most of the people are sleeping very bad in a hospital. And then again, in the between time, not sleeping, waking up, the ghost of the night, uh, the problems, the worryings becomes big, 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 big. And then the music uh, helps you to, shine, to fight away those ghosts. You can then point the patient to the fat music NHS on Spotify. There he finds his inspiration and the help for his 525 list. So now the patient can work for himself, work to feel better, but also for his recovery. And you all know that patient engagement is one of the most important things. And you can do this now with something that everybody likes, and that's music. Again, what you do now, you give the patient or you contribute by the patient to a better and faster recovery. It's very important, of course. You reduce pain up to 25% and you support the immune system. And this is what everybody patient wants. Uh, everybody wants to go quick out of the hospital. Uh, nobody wants to have much pain. And everybody has feeling in the hospital, I had to build up my immune system. Now you can. Dries out away the ghosts of the night. Stop circles of negative thoughts. It reduces stress and it gives courage. And the magic thing is that the family can help. Uh, friends, neighbors can participate. Uh, for example, they can uh, send every day one song. Uh, they can help with the playlist and they can all do it on distance. And this way they feel less helpless. And the only thing to realize all these kind of things is to do. Ask the patient for his favorite song. Tell about your 5025 experience. Explain the power of music. And say, hey. Look at Fab Music NHS on Spotify. And with this, you give the patient a great little big gift. Supporting him, his family, and most important also, it reduces your workload. And it also makes your work uh, happier because Talking about music is maybe much better and funnier than talking about sickness and illness. So this is a very, very short thing, how you can make use of the power of music for yourself. Very important because when you're not feeling good, you cannot help. 
and you can help the patient. And Jenny is now will tell you about her experience, uh, how important these things are in the hospital. Oh, fabulous. Thank you, Ignar. Um, what we just to let you know, we um, uh, admin guy, Joe, he's, he's called tent eight in the room here. Um, he's um, oh, thank you, Joe. Uh, we shared a file which is basically a um, an overview of, of everything that um, Ignar has been talking about. So there's different playlists um, and a really good summary, a takeaway um, for you to take away and consider in your own lives and in your own work. Uh, but we had problems opening it. So he's now sorted that out through Fab Change. Um, I was going to offer to share my screen um, um, uh, Ignar, but it looks like Joe has sorted it. Oh, we have Mr. Lily joining us now, which is lovely to see. Good morning, Roy. Hi, Roy. Hi. Greetings, team. <laughs> I've come to sing a song. Oh, oh wow. That is really great. Yes. <laughs> Please take your guitar and sing. Yeah. No. No? <laughs> How are we doing? Uh, yeah, it was good. So Ignar has just sort of talked us through um, all his experience and research and learning around the power of music and the importance of it. Uh, and we we're just saying how we're sharing. Um, he's, he's done a fabulous guide for people to take away with them. Um, we put the link in, uh, in in the chat there. And and what I was just going to do now was just sort of share some of my experiences, having been. Um, I, I work in an acute hospital, a very large acute hospital that covers Lincolnshire. And obviously over these last 18 months, it's been particularly difficult. But um, listening to Ignar, I was thinking thinking two things, even though I know Ignar quite well and I've come across his work before. I was thinking two things around um, what he said this morning. One, I was thinking, oh, my goodness, I wish we had got this sorted right in the middle of the pandemic with all the visiting restrictions all the distress and concern if we had as an organ certainly for my organization got the process into place to be able to support people with playlists and encourage listening to music it would have made um some of our pandemic experiences easier but then i was also thinking actually it's it's all the time it's not just during the pandemic um Whenever somebody comes into hospital, you feel vulnerable anyway. Um, it doesn't matter whether you're coming in for an ingrown toenail or major abdominal surgery. You still feel you're taken out of your comfort zone, your safe environment. You're taken away from your your friends and your support structures. Um, you're subjected to visiting times and routines and you have your meals at different times and you're woken up in the night to have your blood pressure taken, all those sorts of things that put you out of balance and just how important music can be. One of the pieces of work that I did um, in between, well, it was in between waves one and two, because uh, certainly we found, um, well, it was probably throughout wave two, which was tougher. Um, I was has had a patient experience collating the experiences of our patients being in hospital during the pandemic but also of course the staff's experience and it, it was a harrowing piece of work it, it it really did affect me listening um to some to some of the stories and some of the experiences none of them really shocked me but i think it was the power of hearing it hearing them in their voice um, so I had nurses say to me, for example, when uh, around patients being in and visitors not being able uh, to come in and everybody terrified of COVID because all they ever saw on the news, it was you were flooded with numbers and numbers of deaths and what was happening globally. And one nurse said to me, if I think about it too much, it just hurts my heart. Uh, and and to a degree, that's what nurses, doctors, cleaners, our supplies guys, everybody was doing, I think, families, friends. We were trying to 
bolster ourselves up and put on some armour and the British stiff upper lip and we'll get through this when actually the minute your door is closed you're actually overwhelmed by it all and you're terrified by it all um, and I just think how music can make such a, a, a massive difference to that. Our staff have told us throughout the pandemic but I mean we're going into a very difficult winter. Roy knows I'm a huge fan of all he you say in your your daily um daily messages and e-letters so you know some of this is not new it's just that the pressure is slightly greater at the minute uh, and basically what we're experiencing in the nhs is is the outputs of years and years of difficulties um and our staff at the moment obviously i'm speaking from my experience but i know that this is replicated elsewhere we're understaffed. We have loads of locums. We're recruiting like mad. Uh, our staff are being moved from ward to ward to cover the gaps. Uh, we have three times a day staffing meetings to be able to juggle our staff like they are, uh, you know, counters on a game board. Um, and and that's really difficult to work with day in, day out. You come into work thinking you are going to a particular ward and when you get there you're moved and whilst they understand the need for it it's really unsettling and the biggest thing that staff say that if you could have one thing what would it be and they say time time to sit with that patient who reading between the lines is clearly distressed and wants to talk but you haven't got time to talk to them time to just sit and sit beside somebody um, time to answer all the bells that are ringing, time to spend a little bit more time doing a dressing or, or when, you, when you're at meal times, not rushing off to the next patient. And I love the idea that actually if we brought music and playlists and had them just as we have our drug trolley to have our music virtual trolley, and we're supporting patients to use music as a therapeutic intervention, then actually some of that worry for nurses of not being able to sit with someone because they know they've got the headphones on and listening to their favourite song or listening to that playlist that calms them or listening to that playlist that uplifts them. Um, and actually what a difference that would make. And we've we've used some of this in the past with you know, distraction therapy. So for patients with autism, for example, you might be giving them fidget quilts and things like that. What we're talking about here is a, a musical distraction from the worries and the anxieties and just help to bring to bring those fears and, and worries down. So I, I think anybody, if we talk to anybody in the NHS, I've never come across anybody in my life who doesn't appreciate music in some way, shape or form. Um, and uh, I, I, I think there's a real opportunity now with the work that, uh, that IGNOR is doing and creating a fab NHS playlist. Um, we should weave this in uh, to become, um, a, a, we should get nice guidance for it. We should say, actually, this is, this is a recognised therapeutic uh, intervention um and certainly what i i, th I think just finally for me the most important thing is jenny is uh not therapeutic but that the patient is self going to work with it and in this way uh, we can do what roy is saying uh, you cannot get a patient of nurses out of the tree doctors don't grow this is a little thing that you can do now to reduce your workload at the moment. Uh, you can contribute to the well-being and get people faster and earlier out of the hospital. It's a little bit, there's a little bit, but we all know so that there are the big things and that is what you can do now. And the most important thing is that people go and to do it yourself, your family, so that it is not coming to you. The only thing that the nurses has to do is to inspire and, well, I, I give you the lines for it. 
And that's exactly what um, certainly what I'm doing and what we're doing at ULHT is part of basically our fab change uh, initiative. So last night on our closed trust Facebook group, I asked people to name their tunes to the, what they'd like to add to the playlist. And I sent a very, very long list through to Ignar this morning. So that's going to be added to the um, fab change list. I will um, work with it. it. It also creates a, what what we found in the conversations is created a ULHT um, playlist and what all the stuff so 66 comments and and, um, and and list there within sort of like about an hour and the staff came together just talking about their music why they chose the one they chose and it was just a lovely feeling in the Facebook group which is normally having a moan about staffing or car parking where it really brought the brought the, the the group together which was fabulous and for with my patient experience hat on we're going to pull together to do some work to encourage patients to create their playlists um we've already got ipads on most of our wards because we used it for video calling during um during the pandemic so we'll make sure that we can um, ensure people can access Spotify on those but obviously people we encourage them to bring in their own devices so we're going to have a huge drive around music um, so music for the patients uh, that they access themselves and we show them how to do that and inspire them to do that but also for staff staff to use as part of the well-being offer that we we give to them uh, you said it's very nice and I'm going to listen back to what you were saying and write down things because it's very nice. So has uh, somebody else uh, comments, uh, questions or want to say? So yeah, I know it's a small select group in the tent and it puts Andrew and Julie on the spot. But what what are your thoughts? What's your favourite song maybe? What What would you put in your playlist? Oh crikey! What go in the playlist? I mean, that, that's that's the difficult part, isn't it? I mean, it's it's what not to put in because there's just so much. Um, a, a, a question came to mind. I mean, you talk about the fifteen to twenty five playlist. I, I can completely see that for myself, and uh, it would remind me of very happy times. What what about somebody who's perhaps had? Yeah, traumatic experiences during that period what do, does it still work for them do they still play out the happy songs rather than songs that remind them of, of sad times or well of course uh, not everybody has a uh, great uh, 50 25 period and uh, if i have a group of uh, 50 25 persons uh, students uh, one or two having not a great time and i'm talking about a time of bullying uh, being uh, very bad you uh, used. Um, most of the time I ask uh, the people uh, go before that time or after that time. Mm -hmm. And the strange thing is that uh, everybody is different. Uh, I also had one woman uh, who was um, bullying very bad as a child, married, uh, that was also very bad marrying Mary uh, and then it became better and I feel guilty to let her make that playlist and bring back all those feelings but she said to me music has helped me through that time so music I really like to hear again although it's from that time but it's for everybody different so if your time was not good, don't use it. Make other music. <laughs> Bro, I love it. Where is your piano? I could play my piano, but I don't think it will go down too well. Um, I was just saying, uh, I don't know if you noticed, Julie's made a very great point in the chat 
about her uh, personal experience. In the chat? Yes, I don't think I don't think Julie's microphone or camera's working, so I think she's oh, going to be. Oh, Julie, I I can I can totally relate to that. Um, I was telling Ignar yesterday that um, when my dad was um, end end of life, he was in a a, a hospital. Oh, wait, it wasn't our hospital. Um, and my dad, my mum and dad, and I grew up in my 15 to 25 year playlist is going to be filled with Scottish jigs and Scottish music because both my parents taught Scottish and Highland dancing. So I could do Scottish and Highland dancing before I could walk. Um, and dad was, he, he was end of life, he was comatose. Um, and I just put, he was, he was clearly quite restless. Um, I just put the headphones on him um i uh, played some scottish jigs and immediately you could see he settled um so i i i can totally totally uh relate to that with a beautiful story beautiful story thank you for sharing roy you're on mute which is an amazing thing actually we don't often get to do that with you sorry sorry um terry tells a story uh, yeah, you get fined five pounds for the Roy Lilly Early Retirement Fund if you come in with your. <laughs> your um, Terry tells a story about her mum. I'm sure you've heard it. Um, her mum had dementia, um, and uh, you know she it got to late stage and it was very difficult. But they she used to play uh, Andy Williams and uh, songs and Frank Sinatra and stuff like that. And her mum remembered the words and sung along. Um, the, and uh, it's uh, astonishing. And I think, Ignar, you started part of your interest, didn't you, in music therapy, in uh, the treatment of dementia. And I, I think we found a piece of research somewhere, didn't we, that said it worked. <laughs> you, you've been doing it for ages and said it worked. And then we found a piece of research that said it worked. Yes, because it, it's amazed me that I uh, read in the chat that I didn't know it earlier. And I really love and I really want it. That, that every nurse knows uh, with a dying person or a person with dementia that they uh, not taking out first the pills now that they say where is your playlist it, yeah, it's very good. really dying people you can you can give uh, help them to relax uh, to help them to let go and not only for the person but also for the people who are around and um, Jenny, you told me that a lot of nurses has trouble with uh, with um, getting through all the deaths they see. And well, here is something that you can help them just by giving some music. So you have the feeling I have done something and you have done much, much more than you think. Very much. So I really want that every, every any chest nurse know. Please give them the music. I absolutely agree. So that is uh, why this. Uh, I'm just sharing. I'm just sharing my um. One of my favourite quotes um that has helped me through um well through life basically, but. The expectation that we can be immersed in suffering and loss daily and not be touched by it is as unrealistic as expecting to be able to walk through water without getting wet. And and I think if staff recognise that, staff often wouldn't say, oh, I'm not strong enough for this, I can't do this. And we talk about resilience and, we, and resilience generally means that people need to put more padding on so they don't take the knock so much. And I actually think resilience should be about stop being beaten. You shouldn't need more padding. It should be about understanding yourself and where you're at and being given permission um, to accept that you are going to be upset when you go home. But actually, this is how you can manage that. This is how you can learn to live with that, how you can keep yourself safe and calm um, because we can't hide away from it. Um, and I know many staff, I loved on your um, playlist, uh, Ignar, I know, you know, many staff listen to music on the way home. Um, I, when I used to have a long commute when I worked in London, I did. Uh, I used to have a two hour commute going home and I just headphones on. 
it, invariably my ears were ringing when I got home because I had the, the volume up so loud. Um, but you, you need it almost to switch off and get back to you at the end of the day, don't you? Um, yeah, and that every two minutes I'm going to be saying that's the power of music. That's the power <laughs> of music. So, Andrew, you were talking about the music about your 50-25 period. To me, Andrew. Andrew, yes, go, Andrew. You was uh, you was you say I'm seeing uh, my playlist from the 50-25 uh, time. You are mute. I don't hear you. <laughs> Sorry. That was better. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm such a lagger. I've only just recently got Spotify, mm -hmm. and I started putting together my first playlist. And because because of the way that it links, and it will say if you if you you put this song, it suggests other songs. And what I found was I was putting this playlist together, and it, it was all so my sort of early to late teens. All these songs that I'd completely forgotten about, which I'd sort of. Uh, pulled together um, and I realise now that, I, that I, I need to extend it a bit through to that 25 age <laughs> but, but like I say it's, it's just it's just that, that there's just so much music that you can think oh yeah and then there's that song and that song and that song that it, that it sort of uh, it just grows so big so quickly um, but yeah so, so it, it was um, just <clears throat> pulling that together and when I saw your link about the 15 to 25 I was just interested as to as to why that was what I mean just that it's formative years I suppose mm -hmm. uh, why it is you ask yeah yeah why uh, nobody knows <laughs> 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 nobody knows uh, why the music we have heard between our 15 to 25 music is so deeply rooted uh, like nothing uh, after that um, and also we don't know why the magic uh, trick is that it's also uh, rooted the memories about it and really when you listen to that music uh, I get so many stories from my students uh, I was there uh, at the holiday on the beach uh, I was sitting uh, working for my exam <clears throat> everything is coming alive they really smell smell the flowers they can hear the sea um, the only thing that you can think about is maybe is that your brain is uh, full grown around 25 that, that is maybe an explanation but we really don't know um, but it works and it is very important that you uh, realize that this is the music uh, even you don't like uh, it is the music you've heard. <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, and that, that's the, that was the sort of the aha moment for me. Um, because I, I mean, certainly in my late teens, I wasn't a huge music fan. Um, probably because the only music we had in our house was either classical or Scottish jigs. And, and you know, as a... As a teenager, it didn't really get you going. A bit, a bit of Donny Osmond, which shows my age. But um, I was trying to think. Oh, at first, when I first knew this from McNair, I was trying to think. Well, what would I pick? And it's not what I'd pick. It's what I would hear. And now, when I hear some classical tracks, and certainly when I hear any Scottish jigs or bagpipes, it just immediately puts me in a place. <laughs> um, so um, it, it, it's really quite powerful when you do it. And I, I often had, I, I had to look back into Ignar's playlist from sort of like uh, the 60s and 70s to actually realise, yeah, oh, yeah, I remember hearing that. Um, I wouldn't be able to tell you who it was, but I remember hearing that. And it, you, you feel you're in a place, don't you? And that's different from your own playlist that, that Ignar has mentioned in the, uh, in the file. That, that you're choosing that will help you in certain uh, situations through the day. It was quite funny, because, well, not funny, it was uh, quite moving, really, but um, my husband and I, it was probably when we were not far off this time last year, um, when I had COVID and he was very poorly with COVID and we'd had a bereavement in the family uh, and it was just a really, really tough time. I hated not being able to see my grandchildren. We were, you know, 
it, we were all struggling, weren't we? And there was just one <laughs> night we were just lying down, there was bugger all on the telly. Uh, and we just said, uh, I just said to Alexa, play such and such, which was just a song I knew I liked. Um, and then when that finished, he said, he chose one from Alexa. And then we just carried on doing this for hours. And then we went back over and we've created that into a playlist. Um, so that is, and we just called it Our Songs. And there is such a mix, <laughs> crazy mix, because he's a, a heavy rock fan. And, you know, you've got a mix with sort of Genesis and Pink Floyd with, you know, beautiful <clears throat> ballads and, and the odd classical stuff. But it's just, you know, it just, it was in the moment. And when we play that play that playlist now, um, all those songs mean something for us. I, I'd struggle to put them in a in one of your lists, Ignar, but it's a defined list of our own. It is just your fifty twenty five playlist. Yeah, that is that is, and uh, you make me realize what you were talking uh, that you also can make, of course, a playlist with the nurses of your ward. Uh, you can yeah. make a playlist of your trust. And uh, that also helps a different kind of uh, talking about yeah. and also bounding. Um, Joe, if you have questions, you always can pop in and ask, or you, you don't have to uh, hide yourself. Uh, yeah, no, I'm finding it fascinating as well, especially from a, a musician's point of view, where it's been, it's been my life. It's like I, I still... The music I will always come back to, despite constantly listening to new stuff, is the, the things I listened to when I was a teenager, and those 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 are the things that I can distinctly remember every moment around those songs, and I still find that going back to those songs uh, later in life, they still have that connection, mm. which um I can I can imagine in the future this is you know this is something that's going to provide great comfort. It's amazing. It really is amazing. When I put on my Facebook group last night, you know, tell me you know, your favourite song, what calms you and what uplifts you. It 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 was immediate. People could immediately go to them. Um, you know, they didn't have to sit and think about it. There's some saying, oh, there's more than three, but you immediately went to it um, because it is so meaningful to you. Well, Joe, what do you play? What what what? I play, I play a bit of everything. I play guitar. Um, but yeah, it's, um, I was going to say, in the, so in hospitals at the moment, are you finding, um, is, is there a lot of access for patients um, to, for streaming platforms and devices? God, no. Well, there might be in some of the posher, richer hospitals, but at United Lincolnshire, we've, we've now, we've not managed to get iPads on every ward. Um but we used that we had them on most wards during pandemic for to support video calling. Um, we do come across some real ridiculous brick walls, um, such as if people bring in their own devices, are the charges safe? They're not going to blow us up. You know, everything has to be pat tested. Um, trying to get the money through charitable funds to have um, headphones, for example. Yeah. Um, the bedside entertainment systems at our hospitals um, are about to be thrown out and we are going to a new provider um, which will be much more about Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi streaming. Not every, not I mean our Wi-Fi in the NHS is, is pants uh, in many places and there are certain dead spots in most hospitals so if you're in a ward that is close to x-ray for example when they've got lead lining everywhere you, you, you're you not going to get a signal at all no, um, but and, it, and it's part not part free either patients have to I pay for the wi-fi it's crazy but i think that the most important thing that the people go on by themselves so uh yeah. we talk about it 70 percent has its own mobile phone yeah uh, you can have a free account uh, to uh, spotify so you can walk about it so 70 percent of all the patients must can get through or access to their music and they must do it themselves because otherwise yeah. it comes down to the nurses and the trust and that is not what uh, what is meant to be to make your work uh, load uh, lesser mm. uh, and you will see when 70% is using it and they see how much it does the rest of following 
yeah. uh, I think also, Joe, in Holland, we have a group of people who are giving live uh, music uh, at the ER, uh, also uh, done in England. Yeah. Um, and of course, that's very good. It's also for temporarily because they are for an hour and then they are away. <laughs> and you are 24 hours a day in a hospital, seven days a week. It was longer. Uh, but you know now, um, when, you, when you're playing for people, then at that moment uh, you activate uh, not only your own brain totally, yep. but uh, you also activate the brain of your listeners. And when they like your music, they make the brain make endorphins and they make feel good. So, and also endorphins is one of the transmitters that help make the messages going better from one cell to the other cell in the brain. And so deeply, 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 it is going on. Oh, and the nice thing is that the real power of music is uh, when you lay here in brain of my, I don't play music, I don't do, and you're laying here, example, your brain, you're a musician, then you really can see the difference. Because for your uh, making music, your brain changed. Yeah. Uh, I, I found that amazing that that music can do that they, it, they did do a study didn't they where they actually had an mri mm. you actually saw the electronic images and the difference in the brain what physically happened in the brain when people listened to music um i'm sure if people googled it or somewhere they'd find that clip it was just phenomenal joe we need to get you on a playlist then you've truly arrived mm, i think so <laughs> I could make I could make you one for the the 16 to 25 period for future patients. <laughs> so, any other thoughts or comment? I hope it has been. Has it been good and interesting? It's, it's been really interesting to me. I think as well. The, um, uh, I think Igmar, what you're saying, it, it really resonates, especially when you you split those. Um, the, the way that music has different functionality in, in the way that you listen to it, the sort of in your moods and times of the day. I, I certainly relate to that. There's certain, you know, I, there's certain songs I can only really listen to if I'm in a certain um, state of mind. And I think activating those as a as a form of uh, therapy, I think is incredibly useful. It, um, it, is, it is amazing. If you know, uh, people with autism, uh, they put up a song uh, waking up, uh, going shower, brushing their teeth, and at that moment, uh, the music is giving in them the shelter and the possibility to to act, to being active. So uh, that is really amazing, uh, and that is what what art and music is doing. I told you before, it, it is an, it's a highway, it's a highway to freedom. It, it is a gate where people with a disability can reach for themselves. Not only people with disability, but also we. And uh, I think also, um, remember that, uh, especially for uh, the dying people at the end of life, uh, people really like to talk, but talking about your deep emotions uh, is very difficult. Uh, you cannot do that suddenly. So, but when you ask uh, people at the end of life, what kind of music you like to hear or what should we listen to together? And you do that, the person cannot wait to the end of the song and then tell you why he chose the song, what he means with it, what it means for himself. So at that moment, the music opens up uh, the emotions but also giving uh, the possibility to uh, put it into words. That's, that's, yeah, I mean, that's anecdotally, I can see the how, you know, what, music is a shared experience as well. It's a, it's a, it's a conversation. It's often the thing that you find you have in common with people and lets your guard down and finds connections. And I can imagine, you know, it, it helps loosen that part of you. 
there's one of the greatest things yes it's also for the for the nurses between themselves but it is also a very easy way to connect with the patient uh, i also working on a project for uh, people um, um, you have very probable use and that you use music instead of talking very much so your first start is what kind of music you like or make your playlist and we have now pilots and that some people find it so uh, confronting and doing so much with them it does much more than telling over and over this is good for you do this do that so Igna, um if i just share my screen a moment i've opened up your playlist um See if it let me do that. Your Spotify. So um, the link to this is in the in the file that we've sent around. So this is if you click the link, it takes you to this Spotify um, playlist. So and this is all the. Do you want to just explain what you've got here, Ignar? Okay. Can you put them up? See them all? Yeah. So we'll open. Is that all of them? If what you want me to open one up? I can do it also, of course. Here, of I am not. Um, can I see them all? Yes. Uh, so this is waking up. Wow, some great songs here. Well, this is um, what I have done is making an uh, inspiring list. So, of course, this is. Uh, helping you to visualize or to hear what kind of a waking up list could be because it is most important that you make your waking up list but most important I think are uh, the hit list of the did I, did I make and also the instrumental lists I've made um, and I have make can you see them Joe? Yes I can see yeah uh, what did I make more? On the left side, you can see. And did you? And you said you curated these lists by going through um, chart charts in different countries to try and cur curate it to a particular time period. Uh, yes, these are the UK hits. So this is for the for the, for the Fed, of course, for the NHS. So I have uh, find uh, the hits of the UK, and I also have tried to uh, make um, working out list for different kind of ages. As you can see, I have made them for other. Um, I just pick up. Okay, I have them here. Or mm, playlist. Now I have them on my phone for myself. Um, so also I have the time out uh, list where you can fight. Um, no, that was not the one. Uh, the working out list, there you can see that I have put them in different kind of years. And the meaning is that, well, for me, that Justin Durner said, just say, go to this kind of uh, account and go look for yourself. Go work with it. So that is uh, the meaning of an ins uh, to inspire people and to get them do it. That sounds brilliant. That is the most important thing. So, but uh, Andrew or Joe, if you have uh, from your kind of experience uh, ideas, or you can say oh, this was a very important uh, song in the UK or playlist, uh, I really don't know that kind of thing. Uh, please be welcome. Tell me, uh, share them with me, and I put them uh, on this account. Well, I'll have a think. <laughs> yeah, I've got a look, yeah. 
So something something that's made me realise though is that w- when I was travelling to and from the office, I would always listen to music either way, and that that sort of getting into the day and then chilling out at the end of the day. Whereas now, because I'm at home, I just listen to the radio all the time. So it's it's not it's not my music. If yeah. you're right. Mm-hmm. So so perhaps uh, perhaps I'll get back to uh, listen to to my playlists uh, throughout the day rather than just the radio. And that is what uh, what I really try that people become aware and, and, and really use music conscious. So not at random. Yeah. Really think about it, and then it is of course if you have just working around or, or whatever you do, you can listen to everything. But if you really want to help music yourself or especially make you feel powerful or something else, then you have to be really conscious and make that list. And most of the time people love it to make that kind of list. I think um, I was just thinking that, I mean, I, I, I mentioned that um, I lost my hearing due to COVID. Um, and prior to that and since that as well, I, I have incredible tinnitus. And one of the things that helps the noise of tinnitus is is music. And what I I do and used to do, continue to do at work, is have um, have my phone on, um, probably through the speaker or the headphones, and I have some music gently playing in the background. Well, I've ten- I've had a Spotify account for quite some time, um, and what I tended to do was just pick a, an album and and run through an album, and I'd end up skipping tracks that I didn't particularly like, and and so constantly back and forth. And I love the idea of being structured. I've always been somebody who's tidy and organised and a playlist would structure that and would give me, you know, um, help me to choose those songs that calm my tinnitus and help me work and, you know, and motivate you and wake you up when you're at the, towards the end of a day and you've still got a report to write, you know. So, yeah, I, I, I can get that, now that people would like to have their playlist and they go to um so i've never i've not done it but i i've well i've started doing it i've got the titles i just need to put the correct songs in the in the different um in the different bits i was just looking at spotify just now and my account is a right mess i do need to give it a good tidy up now it's a chance to do it well do it uh uh, Joe, did you recognize the song uh, Roy played? I did not, no. Okay, <laughs> just ask him then the next time if he comes uh, this <laughs> afternoon, you can play with him. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to stick it on Twitter. I recorded it. <laughs> okay. On my iPhone, I'm going to embarrass him. <laughs> well, that's not so easy <laughs> to do. <laughs> Pub- publicly. There he is on Twitter with his millions of followers. So I'm just wondering, guys, if we've come to a sort of a natural sort of conclusion, bearing in mind, you know, I, I know it's sort of like scheduled to 12, but it's a small group. If we'd got had more, we'd probably had lots more sort of comments and things. But lovely, Julie. I'm really pleased <laughs> that you've, you've enjoyed it. It has been great. And I think we will all be revamping our playlist tonight. But anything else? Julie or Andrew or Joe that you'd like to add to it. Just wanted to say thanks very much. It's been really interesting. Really enjoyed it. Um, I'm off to, to do my playlist now. Fabulous. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, if you want to know very more, I really recommend uh, the book of Oliver Sacks, uh, Musicafolia. Wow. For me, one of the best. And Oliver Sacks, coming from London, Englishman, yeah. Englishman. It's, well, it's really the best. You want to have a good book for the holidays. Uh, I also can say his uh, book on the move, his book about his life. His life is amazing, just like uh, his view on the music and what he has done with it. Thank you very much. So, Ignar and Joe, lovely to see you. Andrew, lovely to meet you. And Julie, distant, but there in the chat. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, Ignar and Joe will be back at two, I think, won't we? Yeah, I'll see you yep. before. Brilliant. Have a fabulous day, guys. Um, and Andrew, if you get the chance, pop into some of the other tents. 
um, and uh, check out all the various links. I, I will be doing. Don't worry. Thank you. Brilliant. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks very much. Fabulous, everyone. See you Bye. all later. Bye. 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 Bye COVID. Um, and um, and it's just such a wonderful opportunity to be able to meet people and it really inspires and everything. So uh, a little prompt at the top there about recording. If you're OK, we, we'd love to record. Um, uh, if, if you're uncomfortable with that, please just turn your camera off. It just just because we know how busy everybody is, but it means that they can get in and uh, see the discussions and hear the conversations. Uh, when they get get a chance so I'm co-hosting it I'm um, Ignar's um, right hand woman today um, but Ignar is the star and just to introduce him um, he, he comes from a tiny little hamlet near Arnhem in Holland and you'll probably be aware of you'll have heard of um, a bridge too far and Operation Market Garden is a famous World War II film uh, and that's where Ignar lives not on the bridge itself, but close by. Um, and he's a fellow ambassador with us and has just been incredibly inspiring to so many of us in the Academy. And he's an award winning one as well. Um, and when you just get this sense of sort of a magical inspiration music maestro when he's around you, to the point when you, you did a tour, didn't you, of the UK uh, a few years ago, ignoring came to visit us at our Grantham Hospital sites, which is fabulous. And he'll no doubt tell you um, his journey and where that love comes from. Um, and I think what Ignar has given to us so far through the Academy is just that awareness and understanding that music needs to be seen really as a an aid to care and well-being, just as much as your drugs trolley or your nutrition or your um, personal care rounds and things like that, that music should be intertwined uh, and can in itself be a um, huge benefit to patients and personal care. Um, you may have heard of the phrase coined by the wonderful Terry in the room that the little things are the big things. And what you'll see and hear from Ignar today is that recognition that perhaps something just as simple as helping somebody listen to their favourite song um, can just make a huge, huge difference to their uh, to their care and well-being, and importantly uh, for our staff as well. So it's those small acts of kindness that make a huge difference. And I have no doubt, it's anything like this morning is going to be a fabulous session, uh, and we hope you enjoy it. So I'm going to hand you over to the wonderful Ignar. <laughs> Well, thank you. Thank you, Jenny, for helping here uh, in the stand and for your input, really, and for the great uh, introduction. Too much. Um, I think uh, that music can contribute to something that the NHS is needing now. Uh, Roy is telling us over and over, uh, nurses and doctors are not growing on a tree. We cannot pick them out now. So we have to do something. And when we really make use of the power of music, uh, we can um, we can reduce the workload and from you, from the nurses, and we can uh, give the patients a little bit of care that you not cannot provide at the moment because you are overloaded. So hello dear Rachel. Lovely. I don't see you, but I love you. Thank you for coming by. Um, okay, before we start, I ask you if you want to close your eyes now and then think about your favorite song. Just think about your favorite song now. Well, for me, at the moment when I think about my favorite song, it pops up in my head, it plays in my head, and it makes me feel good. And that is the magic of music. It even works when there is no music. Uh, it works when you talk about music. And that is what uh, Jenny also uh, appears at her ward, asking just about the favorite songs, 
and there started a different atmosphere at work and you get different kind of stories to hear. Uh, and the power of music is much bigger than you think. And this power you can use also for yourself. And you can use it for yourself, for your patients, and what I say, to reduce your workload. As music is one of the strongest self tool there is. Music chases away directly your blues. It uplifts your mood. And you really can say music is a natural antidepressant. Or you can say, or you, you can use it, or better, you need it when your workload is too high and becomes too heavy. Or when you get hurt by what a patient, uh, family member, or a boss that tells you when you got exhausted disappointed, scared, or you're going home depressed, you can switch off, sleep badly, wake up tired, and going with a heavy heart to your work. It is then, it is then that music really can help you. As music is capable, or like no other, to reduce your stress and provide you nearly immediately with a positive mood. Well, and how are you going to do that? How are you going to make use of this enormous power that is on your hand and which music? Well, superpower. That has the music that you have heard between your 50 and 25 years. This music is the deepest rooted in your brain ever. Uh, so deeply that even Alzheimer's cannot destroy these music memories. And the magic, the magic of this is that it brings directly the memories from that time back. It brings back the joy and the happiness that you feel. And I will ask you, Try it yourself. Try it yourself and make your own 50-25 playlist. And this is, this is the only way, this is the really way uh, to experience yourself, the real power and magic of the music. And when you are going to make, when you are going to make to make the list, don't make that list. Uh, from the top of your head. Don't do that. Uh, because then you think about the music you love and you like. Just like Terry say, well, that kind of song I'm ashamed for. No, you are not. <laughs> <laughs> that is the you need, because that brings back the memories. So when you go to look, make this list, look at the charts at the time. Uh, or you can go to Fab Music NHS on Spotify. There you'll find all the UK hits from the 50s till 2000. But also think about the music your parents, sister, brother has played. This music you have heard. Or the music at the church, party, radio, or the TV. And make this list. Listen to it and observe. Observe what does the music do with you. And when you have experienced and felt the power of music and you want to make use of it, I advise you 10 for the best. 10 playlists, make them and that is your own, own support system. Ten. The first one is good morning. And that is for an optimistic start of the day. Two, go get to work. And this one prevents you during going to work that negative thoughts of worrying pops up. These steals energy. 
optimistic music give you energy. Time out. You can use it for a break. Or at the moment at your work, you have the feeling, I can't go on. Take your phone, pick your, tick, pick your playlist, and listen to that number. Uh, minimal three minutes, and you'll have a little boost to go on. Four, going home. This music helps you processing the day so that you don't take the warriors at home. And five is your 5025 list. This is your magic list. This is your basic list. Uh, you can use songs in the other playlist and they really helps you to find other kinds of music. Six is working out loud. Working out is a very important. And during your working out, also the music helps you to work better out but also prevent, again, from negative faults. Seven, tranquility. This music, this is the music that brings you in contact with yourself. It brings you in balance. It gives you inner peace. And I think that this one is a very important uh, playlist, especially when we look at uh, how, how high the pressure is for you nurses uh, at the moment and what is coming this winter you have to get hold on you you i even read about it is more like a war zone so you this this list please make them and find that music eight is courage uh, there's a song that you helps you where you think oh i can't go on i don't know what to do it hasn't use for me, there are two songs, and they are from Dolly Parton, Better Get to Living, and In the Meantime. Every time uh, that I think, do I have to go on, or what I'm doing, or I don't know, those songs will get me back on the trail. Nine, happy. That is the music that makes you going out of your head, let your dancing on the table, uh, makes you really, really crazy. Shout it out. And then 10 is good night. And again, I think this is an important one. Um, it helps you to get relaxed. And also the time you're lying in bed and before you fell asleep, it's that most people going to think, worrying, and then the ghosts are popping up. And the music helps you that they disappear. And a good night's sleep, that is your charger. So fill the tent for the best with the music that works for you. And you are aware of the power of music. So look conscious which music you pick. You pick the music for the right moment. So these are not uh, just lists, so, oh, this is my favorite list, or just listen to the radio. No, that is not what I meant. These lists, you make them conscious, and you pick out the songs that resonate with you. Uh, you can also find on Spotify at the Fab Music and it's just inspiration list that I've made that you can see from, wow, how do I do that or what kind of music? But the most important thing, it must be your music. And as the music helps you, it can also help your patient. And for the patients that you have too less time, because you want to comfort the terrified patient, to console the crying boy, talk to that lonely lady, and be there for the dying patient. But you have no time. Being understaffed, overloaded. And you have a way that you can give, that you can help. And it costs you not so much time. And how do you do that? First, ask the patient 
for his favorite song. Just I do with you. That simple question that happens a lot in the brain of the patient. And then you must imagine that a favorite singer, a band or a piece of music is like a good friend. It gives you shelter, strength, confidence and courage. And then you tell your patient about your own 5025 experience. Therefore, it is so important that you make your own 5025 playlist because speaking and telling out about your own experience make it more powerful and believable. And the next shift or the next day, you ask the patient about his 5025 experience. And now that the patient has for himself experience the power of music. He wants to go further. So you explain very short in three sentences the power of music. That's very simple. Music activates the whole brain. It contributes to a better and faster recovery. Favorite music makes the brain produce endorphins. And endorphins is so-called body's own morphine. And then you give the patient the music recipe. One take five playlists and fill them. First, good morning, in motion, tranquility, happy, and good night. And I think emotion is very important because it helps to get the patient coming out of bed. Well, you know, end of pyjama days. <clears throat> it's also very important uh, by the rehab, um, rehab uh, exercise that he must do, because all the rehab exercise you do with music goes better and faster. And the tranquility, again, is very important when you are lonely, scaring in a hospital. And happy, of course, it makes him happy. And the good night, well, most of the people in a hospital don't sleep very well. And we are again at night, the sorrow, the pain, the fear is popping up. And then the music is one of your greatest friends and help you to put in sleep. It's working better than sleeping pills. And here you have your tools that you can easily help a patient. And you can much do more uh, because I have heard from Jenny that uh, Nurses feel, I, I want to do more, but I cannot do more. I want to help to beat for the dying patient. And, and one song, if you give the patient the idea of the possibility to listen to one song, you do so, so very much. You cannot imagine what you do. I, Ignar, I'm really sorry. Can I? Because I have got to go in a minute, and I don't want to monopolize or interrupt your talk. But I just wanted to say, first of all, how actually, when I first was listening to what you were saying years ago now, and I made my 15 to 25 list, I actually made it what I remembered I liked. And then I heard you talk about, as you've done today, no, what were your mum and dad playing then? So I looked and that actually was it had even more of an impact. So it wasn't the the silly little pop songs I was picking. But actually, when I look back, what really resonated with me were was the jazz and the the Andy Williams and the Frank Sinatra that my mum and dad were playing. So I think we mustn't forget the music we would hear, not just what our music that we bought. And and the the second thing is, you know, you you talk about it really passionately, but uh, learning uh, about music enabled me to to help my mum as she was on her journey living with dementia, and even allowed me when uh, in, for the final year of her life when she went to a care home, I took in the iPad, I'd made the um, the playlist, and I taught and showed the care workers uh, in her lovely care home about the power of music. 
And then they were buying little Walkmans and making playlists for other patients or patients of a similar age with my mum would come and sit next to her and listen to her playlist, her Andy Williams and Engelbert Humpledink and all these people. So I, I've, I, it, it, it is such a powerful tool. If she was anxious during the day, the carers would turn on a certain piece of music. It would calm her. If she didn't want to go to bed or was frightened of something, they would play certain music. And it's and, uh, you know, now I, my, I have an education role, not a clinical role, but I wish I had known this before. Because the use of this in acute hospitals is massive, absolutely massive. The fear of surgery, you're going down for your cancer operation the next day, all of these things, the, the loneliness and isolation at night. Uh, you know, now I think as a ward sister, I would have a very different practice. Um, and, and I'm quite sure that medication for things like uh, um, anti-anxiety medication and sleep medication would go down without a doubt. Um, so I just wanted, you know, in your discussion as you go on now, um, just to ha this 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 really is so powerful in care. It's powerful for me as an individual, but it's really really powerful for care our care as uh, as nurses or carers um, in the community. Uh, and thank you for sharing this with us today. And we are going to obviously share this recording and make a box set and link it to all your other resources. So many, many other people will get the opportunity to learn from this. And I'm just disappointed I have to leave early, but um, I do. So thank you, Ignar. And um, you've taught me a huge amount. Um, so thank you. Thank you very much. Take care, Bye. Terry. Lovely to see Bye. you. Bye. And that is what it is, as Terry is saying, that music is really a very big tool and very massive tool, as Terry is saying. And it really costs nothing. Uh, Seventy of the persons are going to the hospital, have their mobile phone with them, and they have access uh, to uh, Spotify, and they can make the list. And really... Uh, the favorite music and the list, and they, if they really have aware of the music and set it conscious, making playlist, it contributes to a better and faster recovery. Music can reduce pain up to 25% and it supports your immune system. And this is what every patient wants. Every patient wants to go out of the hospital as soon as possible. And that is also what we want, because there are a waiting list. And every patient don't want to have the pain. And everybody wants to build up his immune system to go better on. So this is the trigger. What's in it for me, this is in it. And at the same time, it makes you work as a nurse easier. It reduces your workload. This, it does on two sides. It works on two sides. And the happy thing is that the family, friends, neighbors, they can per per sorry, can participate with it. Uh, for example, they can every day send a new song or they can help with playlists on a distance. And this way the family feel less helpless. So remember, the only thing you have to do, ask the patient for his favorite song. Tell him about your own 5025 experience, explain the power of music and say, hey, look at the Fab Music and the Chess on Spotify, there you find it all. And with it, you give the patient a great little, little, big, big gift. And as Jenny has shown me so much more inside stories about um, how nurses are coping now with uh, the COVID. Um, you can tell how important all those things are, Jenny. Thank you, Igna, and thank you again. Even though I heard you 
this morning and I'm aware of your work, I still just sit here just drinking it all in. I think I think what's really important here is that the power of music works for both staff and patients. Uh, and one of the big things that I've certainly been aware of more so, I mean, it's throughout my career, but it clearly has, has incredibly ramped up and heightened it during uh, the pandemic is it, it, the, the importance of staff well-being in order for them, for staff to be able to do the best they can for patients. Um, and um, the a piece of work that I did at, at my trust, um, and I know it resonates with um, trusts up and down the country and care providers up and down the country, um, is just how tough it has been during the pandemic. Um, for patients coming in uh, afraid of COVID, um, many avoiding um, going for care and treatment during COVID, and then coming into hospital and not having their family or friends being able to visit. Uh, in many cases, having very limited personal items with them as well and all the difficulties that that brings. And then that in turn has put pressure and anxiety on staff because they've seen how distressed patients are and families are and families not being able to get in touch and it's just it was just this whole um it the way it all sort of tangled up together and a quote that i've used um a lot during my career but perhaps more so um since the pandemic it, it is the fact that at the end of the day um Oh, the phrase going. I'm going to get the exact phrase again now, but it's essentially the fact that you know you cannot go through um, distress and difficulties and not have the impact of that um, day to day. It, you know, it's just like you can't expect to walk through water and not get wet. It is a you have to accept that you, it, this is going to have an impact on you. And one of the things that, you know, staff have said, for example, is that if they truly sat and thought about how it's affected them or how it's affected their patients, one nurse said to me, if I think about it, it just makes my heart hurt. Um, others, the big thing, and this is not going away, it isn't just pandemic related, is, is time. The one thing our nurses and our doctors want is time. If you think it just, you know, outpatient clinics or anywhere, provide, you know, you've got a 15 minute, 10 minute consultation in outpatients or nurses have got 28 patients and they're three staff down. And they know that actually for that lady sitting in bed six, probably all she wants is just someone to sit and talk to her. And they don't have the time to do it. And, and it just it, it, what's really evident with this work that. Ignar has done and certainly creating playlists that we can access through the NHS um, is it's around actually that busy time the nurse doesn't have time to sit and just give that little bit of quality um, companionship the music can do that you know helping that patient prompting them nudging them to say about their playlist or to listen to their song or to find their song. Across most of our wards during the pandemic, we managed to um, get most wards have iPads that we use for video calling when visiting was suspended. Um, but many of our patients, I think now you said something like 70, 80 percent of people generally have, have phones, smartphones where they can access Spotify for free. Um, I mean, we have some problems with Wi-Fi and things, but they're just little brick walls that we can knock down as we go. So, it, you know, actually giving giving staff the tools, the simple tool of music in their tool bag alongside all the other things that they have is just going to be fabulous. I started discussion on my closed on our trust Facebook group last night to ask staff to start thinking about what their favourite song is and what song they would go to to calm them if they were upset or to uplift them. Um, 
And within an hour, we had 190 odd songs, which I've already sent over to Ignar and he's put into the playlist already. So what we've what we're deciding to do is that we're having this staff playlist. What the what it what it brought within the discussion, just talking about it, made the staff come together. And it was a it was a well-being initiative, just asking the question. It made somebody feel good, just just connecting with them and asking them that. Um, and we're going to really drive the to encourage um, patients to make their playlist. I think it's a great idea at pre-assessment when somebody knows they're coming in for planned appointment and they've got a bit of time to make a playlist before they come in. Um, but equally to be able to support them internally um, to make a playlist and speak to their families. And as Ignar said, this isn't about giving the nurses another job to do to sit down and help somebody create a playlist. It's it's encouraging them to do it. Yes, there'll be one or two that might need some help. And we also thought uh, in the discussions as well, we also thought, well, I don't know how it is with other trusts, but the minute we, we're not permitting, um, like in the run up to Christmas, we're not permitting choirs and um, carol singers in the wards like we did before because of the whole risk of COVID um, and uh, the whole singing business just sprays virus everywhere. But we thought we could have um, some Christmas playlists, some start of the day playlists, some, you know, some well-being playlists, just as um, just as Ignar has described. But we also want to tie this in with staff well-being. So we really want to encourage our staff to do the their own playlist, their 15 to 25, but then to go to their top 10 lists, as, as Ignar has described. Um, because I think it is a double whammy that not only will this support our patients, um, I mean, if it produces your own morphine, then I'm all for it. But it also supports our staff to be able to just just for them to give that little gift of music um, to patients. And in the chat, there is a link to um, the handout that Ignor has done. And if you just simply click on um, a link within that, within the document, it will take you to the fab music um, playlists. Um, and we're actually trying to get as many people today that are part of Fab Change to let us know their favourite songs so we can add to it as well. Um, but yeah, there is there is no doubt that um, the impact on, on staff and the impact on patients. In a similar in a similar sort of story to what Terry described, I I think back um, two things really. Firstly, I did exactly the same as Terry when I first did my 15 to 25 playlist. It was things I remembered from that age and there weren't very many uh, because the main music in our household was Scottish jigs and Highland music because both my parents taught Scottish dancing uh, and classical music. Um, and then Sunday evenings at eight o'clock, sing something simple. None of you will remember that. Uh, it just shows my my age. Um, but I, I, I was picking out Donny Osmond and David Cassidy and Bay City Rollers. And, and you're absolutely right, Ignar, when you think back, it's the music you heard, not necessarily the music you chose. Completely different impact on me. And my, when my dad, it's five years ago now, um, end of life care, um, he was he, he was getting very near the end. He was in hospital and I was sitting with him um, and he was comatose, but you could see he was restless and uncomfortable. Uh, and I put, shows the days again, an iPod. I had an iPod um, with his Scottish jigs on. And I put it on for him, put the headphones on. And he died to that music, but he immediately settled. He stopped fidgeting. Uh, I knew he was calmer. Um, and that was just so beautiful. And the fa and my family found that really beautiful. Um, um, in a busy, traumatic um, world that is a hospital ward, our families might just need that little gentle nudge that have you thought about or what what is this? patients um, 
playlist, we could play that for them. So, so many beautiful ideas. I mean, I could go on forever. I could talk for talk for England, but um, yeah, fabulous stuff, Ignar, fabulous stuff. Thank I just you. wonder in the room. Um, are there questions? Yeah, are, have we got any questions, any thoughts? What's your favourite song? Um, I guess my question would be about how easy it would be to provide, you know, the, the, the mean to listen to music in the wards. I mean, I, I guess it's easy to put a radio station on, but it's not so easy to spend time. Or well, I guess it's asking the family to be able to provide that to their loved ones in hospital. It's... Um, uh, well, the, I think the most important thing is 70% uh, of your patients has this with us. Yes, so yeah. There is the music. So uh, first, I think it is important to focus on the 70% who have the music with us. And when you see that it is working, then you can go thinking, okay, how can we bring the music with those who don't have it? But I think the most important thing is that it is not an extra load at this moment uh, for the nurses. So only uh, to, to inspire and to get the people of the patient doing itself is most important. Um, also what Jenny say, uh, most of the time you have patients in the hospital who can do nothing and you have also walking patients. And you can, of course, also ask the walking patients if they want to help those who cannot do it or don't have it. But if you, if you really from out yourself, and that is, but I think that, that if every nurse make his own 50, 25 playlist, they feel the need and they know the power. And then they can say to the family, Yo, I don't care what you do, but your granny, your man, need this so please bring it on mm, yes yeah, so. and maybe i don't know here in holland you had in the old days you had a hospital radio was that also in england mm -hmm. yes yeah. are they still existing i have to say i never listened to it myself um, okay. so i'm not quite sure I think I they are because um, you see them collecting money from time to time, raising is, funds for f to keep it going. I, I was a volunteer actually <laughs> 20 <laughs> years ago <laughs> in, in my uh, hospital, local hospital um, radio, but yeah, that hospital is no longer there anyway. So uh, I, I don't know where the new new location for the radio is. Uh, what you could do is. Uh, go sitting with the people who makes the radio and say, well, this is the average age of our patients. So please pick out the music about dear 50, 25. Yes. yes. I can do that. We're very lucky. We've got a very active hospital radio at our Boston hospital. Uh, we've got one smaller but still quite active at our Grantham Hospital. Um, many hospital radios now also stream. Um, one of the problems we've had obviously over the pandemic is that the way the hospital radio ran was clearly they, they would actually broadcast in the hospital and I've actually been on there and been interviewed and stuff and uh, did a piece with them but they, they have radio volunteers who would go around the wards and take requests uh, and then come back and that would be on their evening programme. So it's been a bit limited with that. So they are looking at how they can do things slightly different. But yeah, it's a great idea, Ignar. I could get in touch with the hospital radios. But I think, Natasha, I think this, the way I'm going to try and approach it here, because this is my like fab change pledge in a way, um, is to... Um, is to have a bit of have a bit of a campaign. So what we're looking at is what, what I'm I'm looking at. I've already had a lot of interest in staff developing a, um, a a playlist. I want to be able to promote on our website 
um, that there is a NHS playlist and for patients coming into hospital, consider making a playlist and bringing in your device so you can listen to music whilst you're in hospital. Um, I'm going to need to approach our charitable funds for, for some bits and pieces. Um, but I think, Ignar, like you say, if we if we work with those who've currently got the kit, um, they could then champion it for us. I have just seen a colleague of mine, Martin's just joined the room. Hi, Martin. Um, Martin has been uh, instrumental in sorting out our ward based iPads. So um, I had every plan to go back to him after today and see whether there's any way we can uh, get the links to the free Spotify on on the iPad for video calling. I'm not sure whether we'll be able to, but but again, Jenny, good, but again, Jenny, it is so important that we don't. I think, <laughs> I think that nurses started to care too soon. Yeah. I think that is the most important thing that first the people going do this by themselves. Yeah. The most important thing is that the nurses inspire. Yeah. That is the thing. And then they have to do themselves. And you know, patient engagement is one of the most important things. So yeah. if you get the patients that they go working with their own phone. Or that uh, somebody laying in bed and say, well, my neighbor has that. I want that too. So please bring my phone or whatever. Bring it here. I yeah. think we must not uh, provide it for them. They, we must show them that they need it. And they can do it themselves. It's very and they good can point. do it themselves. And very that good. is the most important thing. Because I know that uh, the NHS is over here. So that is one. But the second is this little thing they must do for themselves. Yeah. But it is the nurses who must really get it through them. This is what you must and what you can do. And I think with the, the things that you put in the leaflet, um, we can use that to be able to give some general information to people to know that this is what they can do. Um, and we can have some links from the website and spread the word, really. And like you say, it, encourage people to do it themselves. Because our staff, like you know, I, like I said before, we don't want to give another job to our already overrun yeah. staff with not enough staff and being moved from pillar to post. I think on the other on the other side, I think it's also about um, supporting the staff. Staff are so stressed, so tired, so exhausted. Um, I think you've mentioned in your um, document around burnout, but it's also things like compassion fatigue and, you know, how, how people feel. And music can help people. Um, it, is, it is quite very simple. It's like the five things. Ask yeah. the patient for the favourite song. Tell about your own experience, 5025, explain the power of music and say, hey, look at the FAP music NHS and yeah. go to the work. That is what you have to do and that is what you must do. And, and then I think it is uh, the stone of the little stone that you throw in the pond and then it has to work. But I think maybe most important is and that every nurse makes his own 5025 uh, playlist for, for themselves, but also that they can inspire and that they can help the patient. And, and I think really that uh, you, Jenny, make it very clear for me how frustrated it is for the nurses when they want to care and they have no time. If they, they want to do it very, they like it and with this with this you can give that little bit extra care mm. which is at the moment not possible mm. absolutely i'm aware we've had some um latecomers join us uh, lovely to have you with us um I'm, and i'm also aware that you'll have missed um ignar's sort of introduction um and explanation around the power of music um, it, it, was there any 
questions or anything that anybody wanted to ask in the chat is the link to the uh, to the uh, leaflet that or the the document that um ignore as presenter as developed which is really really helpful and it's on the fab web page and in that is a link that takes you directly to the and the, the fab um playlist i don't know whether i could what i could do should okay. i do it again should i so, share my screen and show them so that one, just one that one is there are there questions just one the other one Want anybody want to say something or to ask? Yeah. Yes, please. Um, so the, the the leaflet that I cannot open actually the link. There must be something with a firewall. So I'll have to send it to my private account and and see if I can open it from there. But does it contain the how to that you mentioned earlier for the elderly patients that may not be able to easily know how to download music onto their phone, for example? Uh, no, that is not on it. No. And that is something uh, that we cannot, uh, I think nurse has not time for it to do that. No, exactly. No, but, it's too but, much but I know that, you know, if you, if I consider my mum who's 80, she's, yeah. she would not, she would be lost probably. And yet she is quite IT literate, but she would probably still be lost. And I, I have to acknowledge I've got, you know, music at home, but I've not got it on my phone myself. Uh, but at that at that time, uh, in, imagine that your mom is in at the hospital, and then I think that it is your duty to provide and to help your mom with that. As mm -hmm. soon as then a nurse has make it very clear, uh, Mrs. Um, Deschamp, is that good or no? Deschamp? Deschamp Smith, yeah. Oh wow, <laughs> that sounds very nice. There's music in it. Um, your mother needs music. Help her. We can we can add a guide. It it is quite simple. And actually, once you I go, I don't to, think that you must do that. Okay. I don't think you don't need to. No, no. the care people want to do too much. <laughs> <laughs> you have to say you need it, and this is something they have to do for themselves or the family. So you give also the family the chance to do something. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. So that they feel not feel. You can give here the people the chance that they don't feel helpless. Mm. Okay. So does that include some sort of um, advice on how to create a list or how important it would be for them to create a list that you can put into the hospital at the entrance that people can pick up and, and read? OK, perfect. Yeah, that, that is in the handout. That's exactly that what I'm yeah. yeah, exactly. And I really... Um, but we, of course, are uh, connected uh, at the FAP, uh, at the FAP uh, Academy. So if there is a hospital that makes a very good uh, shout out at the start of his uh, hospital or what is sending to his patient, please share it. Uh, that is what the uh, Academy of Fabulous Stuff is about. Don't invent the wheel again. So if you make a very good shout out, please let me know. Um, my email is in uh, the chat and you can also send it to Roy or Terry. So are there more questions or somebody wants to say? Brilliant. Staden, I thought you are about music or you are music yourself? I'm, I, I'm a bit of a music nerd. I'm not going to lie, as, as Jenny can, can attest to. Um, <clears throat> my... Obviously, I joined the conversation sort of halfway through, so I'm kind of picking up as we go along. The thing you're saying about not having leaflets and things makes perfect sense to me, because for me, music's a very, it's a shared experience. You know, somebody hears a song and they say to a, a patient hears or listens to a song and says to the person in the next bed, you know, oh, I remember when this song always makes me think of this event, that event, the other event. And it kind of builds those, builds those bridges between patients. So, so I mean, going back to your analogy of the, the pebble in the pond and the ripple effect that that's probably the way to to or a another way of expanding out is is as you say one patient having whatever sort of setup there is i've, I've noticed I've, I've only had a very quick look through your leaflet i've noticed you've got somebody with with headphones on and i suppose the thing i'm thinking is how do you balance out the the disturbing aspect of of music against that 
that shared experience that that's my my little thought that i've just had so is it better to encourage people to listen to music out loud so that it kind of i suppose makes the hospital environment hospital environment feel a bit more normal or is it better to have people listening to their own music in isolation and kind of i suppose doing their own thing with it does that make does that make sense i feel like i've just waffled no 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 i find it very good um I think it depends on the atmosphere at uh, the room. Mm. Uh, and maybe you have people, maybe with the same age, uh, they have in common their 50, 25 music. So it's just what you say, uh, wow, this is mine. Oh yeah, I know that. But do you also mind just so you get a bending? It is beautiful you say it. You build bridges between patients. That is also what Jenny has taught and um I, I lost your first name, but uh, Dijon, you say uh, putting new people together, that you can use it, the music, uh, to build bridges. And if you do that uh, in a ward uh, with patients in a room, uh, you do it with uh, new colleagues, you build. And so what you say, it's totally dependent on what kind of people. If you have uh, for what a teenager with somebody very old, well, maybe it works, but maybe the one was crazy. But I think to stimulate people to pick up the music is very important. And then I think, let it go. Don't do too much. Let it do them. And People get creative and also people want to help other people. So give them the room. And I think that is very important that uh, Natasha uh, was saying that you make a shout out uh, to the family or the patient and give them a very short leaflet. And, um, and that is a thing. And, and maybe we must, but we cannot must, but again I say, uh, make your own 5025 playlist. So, and what is you thinking 105? <laughs> Natasha, you got your hand up. Yes, what about classical music? Because that is across all genres and, and ages. Uh, don't, um, well, my core business is, of course, uh, providing of uh, talk, uh, giving people uh, music for people with dementia. And the most important thing that I say, don't think, don't put your uh, for, for, uh, privilege. So the people has to ch choose their own music. And if it is classical, jazz, uh, it doesn't matter. So it is, so you go too far. <laughs> you're, trying, you're trying too hard, aren't you? Natasha? Like me, you told me off. Yes. That as well. <laughs> no, I'm just thinking that in a, if, is it not better to have something than silence? And if you were to do that for everyone at once, wouldn't classical music just suit everyone? But maybe no. yeah, I'm thinking think, too much. No, I this mean, the, the most. Uh, if you imagine that in some prisoners they use music as oh I don't know the, the, the English word for it to torture people. So you can imagine when you must listen to music that is not your music, it's really a torturing. So uh, again I say and really 70 persons, 70 percent of your uh, patients have this. So you only talk about 30 persons who don't have that. And that is our job to encourage uh, the family or the partners to bring it in. And I think that's the only thing you have to do. So it, I think the question it comes back to what you've said, Ignore, isn't it, about asking. So you're asking that person. I mean, an example that... No, no, sorry, 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 sorry. Nearly not asking. No, really, I really want to say, say that they must 
use music. Mm. This asking is uh, too, um, so you have a choice. But in fact, the nurse is saying, you don't have a choice, you must use music. As you must take this pill, you must go to the uh, something else, but you must use your music because it helps you. Yeah, I think that might be that might be a challenge saying must, but it's uh, I mean I'd love it to get to that point. I mean that I think we're beginning to sort of wake up to some of that in the UK, for example, with social prescribing now, where you know That's GPs exactly. are, you know and and are are saying actually you going and meeting other people or you going having a walk will do you good and actually prescribing that as an intervention. Um, I don't think we're quite there yet, but I think it, like I, I really get your point about the choice. Um, yeah, that, that's also why I call it a music recipe. Yes, yeah, so you have it. So I was I, very curious. Ten five. Did you say have some something to say or to share? I mean, I absolutely get um, where you're coming from as well, Natasha. I think uh, an example I pick up was that we had um, we got this bit of kit called um it's a reminiscence um system where you can um it's it's by the dementia uh network and it's basically a software system on a big screen and also an ipad and and um people can choose uh to watch old films old tv clips and listen to music across the, the genres and i remember when we we got some of these kits and we had it on one of our older people's wards um, and it was a bay full of six patients um, and the um, dementia worker actually said, so, so what should we do? We've got this and this and this. Um, and there was um, uh, the patients collectively chose to listen to Nat King Cole. Um, and there was one patient in the corner who apparently was very withdrawn, didn't want to be involved at all. Um, and when the nurse went to speak to him, he said, I absolutely hate napkin coal. Absolutely. And he was really ratty. He was really unhappy. Uh, and he and so they ended up with it. But the first that was the first time he'd engaged at all. And but he got angry with the music. Um, and so it was an opportunity then to say, so what do you like? What music do you like? Um, and then collectively they were sharing music from Elvis, there was Nat King Cole, there was quite a bit of jazz in there as well, um, and listening to each other's. But it, that was a bridge that was built, wasn't it? That was, even if it, even to say, I don't like that music, um, was, was a bridge. So, yeah, I think, I think like, I'd love us to get to the point that it is seen as a genuine or a, a, on in its own standing, a therapeutic intervention, but I don't think we're quite there yet. It's hard enough to get people to take the tablets, let alone tell them to listen to me. Okay. Uh, tent eight. Are Martin, you... you've got your hand up. Sorry. Tent Sorry. eight. Do you have a question? No, I'm. Um, it's interesting. I think it's interesting. You are. Answer. <laughs> but let's go. I think Martin has a question first. I'm. I'm just listening. I'm here. Uh, it, it wasn't so much a, a question. I suppose picking up on on Jenny's point and potentially commi uh, committing career suicide here. Um, if we did not give patients a choice, what's the worst that could happen? So, so if if it was. As you say, rather than, as Ignar said, rather than giving people the choice to listen or not listen, or if you said to people, you know, as part of your treatment, do this, what's the worst that could happen? Is, is my the, the, the little question, little thought I've got. The worst that this can happen. Uh, the worst that can happen is that they Excellent. make a playlist and enjoy it and have all the benefits that we have uh, spoken about. And of course, uh, the thing that is the worst can happen that the, the person say, uh, well, uh, shut up. I don't want the music. I do what I want to do by myself. Uh, so but that's that's going to be so, so much the minority of people. Yeah, everybody's got their own taste, but music as a uh, as a. Uh, a medium is so broad that 
you know, that there's the stuff that I, I listen to that I think is just noise. And there's other things that I really like, but it's all under the, the heading of music. So if you said to somebody, listen to some music that you like or listen to some music full stop. But as you say, not giving them the choice to me, I, I can't see. And again, I, I'm not not nursing background, so I don't know, but I can't see why we wouldn't do it. That, I think, is, is the point I'm trying to make. Yeah, the, uh, for me, the most important thing is that um, I, I have learned that uh, how do you get people involved? What's in it for me? So uh, when you listen to your favorite music, uh, better and faster recovery, uh, it reduces your pain and it boosts off your immune system. Everybody wants that. And if you think about uh, when people are about teenagers, music is their world. Uh, think about your uh, your teenagers music is it if it's now or then music is so big part of your life then and i don't know how but at the moment that we get sick that we get old dementia whatever this music disappear and it is then at the moment that we just need that music but it must be your music not the music that i think that you like, of not the music that I think that you must listen to. No, it is the music that resonates with you. And the most important thing is, especially here in the hospital, that the people, that the patients are aware. And that is that is the job. That is the job from the nurses, to bring that piece of awareness. And then they go to work conscious with the music to make their own playlist so they can get sooner and better out of the hospital. Is that kind of answering your question? I think so, yes, yeah, I would say so. <laughs> you are a musician yourself? Um, I, I'm not a very good one. I, I no, started... but that's not the question. <laughs> Sorry, yes, I am. I'm definitely okay. a musician. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to hear. I'm bad. No, <laughs> you are. And what do you play? Um, I started guitar lessons uh, March of this year, so I've been learning for about yeah, coming up on nine months now. Okay. Well, we have two missions. Uh, Natasha, yeah. do you play an instrument? Not anymore. No. But I used to do a little, a little bit of a lot. <laughs> you play a lot of instruments. I used to do a bit of piano and a bit of flute and recorder and guitar, but not none of them <laughs> at a very good level. <laughs> Again, I'm more of a um, yeah, I try. <laughs> that, is, that is not important. The most important thing is that you make music. And uh, please remember, at the moment you play an instrument, uh, you use the most uh, potential of your brain you cannot reach it with anything else so it is so important if you can please do it so if you play not good or good I don't care but do it make time for it and enjoy it is it is it is so important you should um you should google there's a really good um video of an MRI where they were live scanning somebody's brain and continued to scan it when they started to play music. And it actually showed the impact on the brain of listening to that music. And it was really quite incredible. Um, just what goes on in the brain. I'm sure it was an MRI, it was some sort of scan. Um, but it was really quite incredible, the impact it had on the brain, um, which I found really fascinating. Um, I used to play the violin, I learned at school, um, and um, it was interesting because I think I've said before that I grew up in a house of Scottish music and jigs and hornpipes, um, and I, I hated the fact that by having lessons at school I was obliged to be a member of the school orchestra. Um, and so I didn't like this sort of structure around the orchestra, but I continued playing on my own up until I left home at 18 and I play the accordion a little again mainly Scottish jigs 
So I have, an, I have an, uh, an orchestra here. I have here a real musician, <laughs> prof, and, and free musician. So we can start an orchestra. But again, yes. Uh, one music stimulants uh, activate 17 billion uh, music neurons in your head. And they spread out to your whole brain. And they activate and connect the totally brain with each other. And think about the connection are so important because you can say we are our connection for everything we do, uh, walking, uh, drinking, uh, my pencil, thousands of connections must be made. And when the connection is going not well by illness, um, dementia or disability, you can help the brain enormously with providing it with music. But that is it. So we should spread the word that music is incredibly powerful. Um, and I think lots of ideas of how we can encourage and uh, as, as you said ignore and in, inspire people to make their playlists and to use their playlist um and not only for patients but for staff and then for in our in our home lives as well um so yeah i think it'd be great i certainly am not that keen on listening to my husband's playlist it's it's all <laughs> It's all a bit heavy metal, you know. So <laughs> he's uh, 15 years older than me, so we don't. We just yeah. overlap a little bit. <laughs> you, you know, you know how Ignaz said earlier about how music can be used as torture. Yeah, that's my husband's playlist. So we have got a few that we've um, we've collaborated on, but <laughs> fabulous. Any other questions or thoughts or comments or dreams relating to music? It's a lovely discussion again. I quite like the fact that it's a small quality group. Um, saying before, it's quality, not quantity. Um, and I think it'd be great. And, and that's one of the things around Fab is that you'd be able to dip into other tents because we've been recording everything. Um, but yeah, the uh, um, Natasha, if you can't access the the link, you might be able to access it offline. Um, but yeah, there are I'll direct links. Yeah, there's direct links there to be able to go to the um, to the playlist. I've already shared the playlist on our Trust Facebook group, um, and uh, going to be starting to sort of spread the word to get um, music much more of a part of of my trust for our patients and staff. So it'd be fabulous. Okay, if you cannot get the hand out, you can email me and I will send it to you. Uh, thank you so much for your time. And really nice. Ignore, it's been amazing again. Thank you so much. Thank you, Joe, for sorting us out in the back.